Okay, everyone, I'm back once again. Sorry for the delay. Um, we're going to be talking a bit in this lesson about what's known as cases. And I think that cases and switch statements and so on are uh, a very important part of uh, learning the basics of how to make a program more modular. And what I mean by modular is cutting it into parts and making those parts more manageable. So let's say that we have a, a program. Um, I believe I asked you guys to make a calculator at one point, and if I didn't, thank Christ, I think I had my C++ class do it about 50 times, so. Um, calculators are just a really good way of making people do, uh, uh, cases, though, and I'll show you why here. So, we're going to make a quick calculator case study, and we'll make this a println. And we'll say, um, enter number one. And I'm just going to copy paste that, enter number two, then we're going to have somebody choose a sign. So, okay. We're clearly going to need uh, int x equals zero and y equals zero. So we'll do input dot next int equal, or wrong way around, and then we'll do the same for y. Did I? Yeah, I didn't put a semicolon there. All right, and then we'll do the same for y. Now, with any calculator, we need to understand what the user wants to do with these numbers. So what we're going to do is say press 1 for addition, 2 for subtraction, Three, four, mul dip. Let's just call it multiply. Yeah, hell with it. I didn't want to make it long, but okay, whatever. Four, four, division. Okay, so that's uh, that's pretty simple. But with what you know now, you could do it easily um, a few different ways. You could use a while statement and do all of them or you could use four separate if statements. And that's fine too. But let's say I wanted to do it all in one structure. No ifs, no elses, nothing like that. Now, a case is not a good way for you to be saving uh, a lot of typing or a lot of space. What a case is good for is really sorting and visualizing what happens to your data. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce you to a few different statements. Number one is called switch. And the switch statement is going to be, I forgot to do select, <laughs> yeah, equals input dot next okay so why is that giving me crap <laughs> what it's telling me that it expected a, a close bracket oh duh yeah that's why I screwed up my own syntax sorry okay so what this means is that based on whatever is in select, it will choose a case based off of that. So let's assume that we have switch of, let's say, two. Then it's going to search out case two. And the way that you accurately code cases is something like this. You do case one, then a colon, and I really prefer using scoping brackets. They're not required. I just really prefer using them. Um, some people say that it takes up space. It absolutely does. Um, it can cause some errors. Sure, if you're going to be using, uh, if you're going to be declaring variables in your cases, they're not going to be usable outside of the scope. But the reason why enjoy using them is typically because I don't use cases for that sort of thing. What I use cases for is things like menus and menu selections. So assuming that we're just 
using this for a menu or something along those lines. Here's what we're going to do. We'll do uh, case one is going to be x plus y. And I don't know, we'll say total is equal to x plus y. Actually, no, we won't even do that. System.out.println x plus y equals plus and then in parentheses x plus y and there you go now I'm going to purposely code this wrong so I can show you guys what happens when you code a case incorrectly alright and I'm just going to copy paste case 2 two more times hate when that happens okay and so that's going to be three and four and so each time I'm going to just be changing the signs so two is subtraction three is multiplication and four is division and again, this is integer division. If you wanted to do this for real, you would probably want to use doubles. And then lastly, we have one that's called default, which means that if none of these are true, do this one. And I don't know why it doesn't like that default. What's the matter with that? Oh. I am dying with the syntax today. All right, and instead of that, we're just going to say something went horribly wrong. Okay, and that's, like I said, the syntax is killing me today. Okay, and so we'll, uh, we'll give that a quick save and we'll run it. And you're going to see a problem immediately after I enter in my selection. So let's say number one is 12 and number two will make six since that goes in pretty evenly. And we'll just select four for division. And as you can see it goes to four but then it also says something went horribly wrong. So let's try giving this another run where I don't use division. We'll do 12, 6, and 1. And now you'll see that it's doing all of them. And that's because what's happening is known as case fall through. Case fall through is basically when you have something and it hits the end of the case and it then just continues to go through the remainder of them. And why this happens is because your select is selecting what case to start at. It's not saying only do case one, it's saying start at case one and then it, it'll get to case two and unless something stops it, it's going to go through case two as well and then three and four and default. So what we need to do is we need to add the break statements that we talked about last lesson to each of our cases. And I don't need to break default because it's already at the bottom, but I will just for good. You know, coding practice. So, okay, last try, we're going to do 12, 6, and we'll do 1 for addition. And our answer comes out as being 18, which is what we would expect. There's no case fall through. There's no problems whatsoever with any of the execution of this. So, with all that being said, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Um, I'm not entirely sure what the next video is going to be about quite yet. I am conceptualizing a few more advanced uses of case, but that's still undecided. I will be posting the next one tomorrow, I believe. So thank you guys for your patience, and I will talk to you again soon. See ya. Where's that button that turns this thing off?